Hello everybody, my name is Nudie. Today I'll be bringing you a video unlike what I usually do on this channel, but recently I came across a World of Warcraft video by a YouTuber named Mad Season Show about the most famous and infamous players of World of Warcraft. Although I've never been a WoW player myself, the stories really interested me and inspired me to make a Guild Wars 2 version myself as I believe all MMOs have incredible stories of legends and characters of their own that are fascinating whether you play the game or not. Like Mad Season, I've chosen to exclude YouTubers and content creators as it would be a bit bland, but instead I've chosen to share the stories of those who have had an impact on the game itself in either a positive or a negative way, making their names stand out amongst others. This video took a lot of diving into rabbit holes and searching across many forums and old reddit posts, so if you do enjoy it, a like and a sub would mean a lot. Let's get into it. The most famous and infamous players of Guild Wars 2. Number 1. Sacrix the Machine. Fucking rally bots! GG! Fucking idiots! Wow! This name being on the list is no surprise, possibly one of the most known players of Guild Wars 2, and easily the most known name amongst World vs World players. The brutal and merciless driver of the Red Guard Guild. Aside from the hilarious compilation videos from various Red Guard members showcasing the best of Sacrix's rage and the guild's funny moments, Sacrix and his guild, Red Guard, are widely known for being the forefathers of World vs World Zerg busting and GVG as we know it today. Funnily enough, Red Guard was the reason I returned to the game very early on and started World vs World myself. Sacrix led the most fierce World vs World guild and he led them with an iron fist. Through Sacrix's harsh and unforgiving leadership, Red Guard became an iconic guild which would go on to conquer both the European and the North American regions of the game. They had established the metas early on in the game, farming any guild or zerg which stood in their way, which ended up making Sacrix the first player in the game to achieve the ultimate dominator title, which is obtained by killing 250,000 players in World vs World. The impressive part is that Red Guard would constantly farm these players with 15 to 20, sometimes a little bit more players, against large zergs of foes that outnumber them incredibly. After achieving this and dominating every guild in the GBG scene, Sacrix stepped away from the game to focus on real life. In his goodbye post he quoted, I won't bother with these fill-in games, but I do plan to gather the original Red Guard plus Guild Wars 2 people for Camelot Unchained in a few years. I look forward to killing you once more then, and from time to time he would return to the game for very short periods just to get his fix, but it hasn't been seen for a long time now. Sacrix is a reason GVG and World vs World guilds are what they are today. Sacrix started many well known terms in World vs World such as Rallywats, meaning somebody who double downs and rallies up other enemy downstack players, Blobs, meaning large zergs and enemy map queues in World vs World, Big and Strong, once again referring to a big enemy zerg, and rallying up your strength to fight them. And in conclusion, he is pretty much the reason Every hardcore World vs World commander sounds like an auctioneer, and back in the day, we were all raging like fuck. We all just wanted to be Sacrix. Jadexi Jadexi was often referred to as the hero of the Aurora Glade server. He is one of the players in the game which rose to fame simply through his acts of kindness and comedy throughout the years of Guild Wars 2. Jadexi was a naked Silvari who would only wear boots and would often be found in Lion's Arch by the Mystic Forge. His reputation was built through giving away gold, precursors, stacks of ectos, gem store items and other expensive or helpful items in the game. Jadexi was so well known amongst the Aurora Glade server that he even has a fan made wiki page you can find on the internet. Funnily enough, this wiki page is filled with impressive amounts of information about the man himself, and because I'm not from the European servers, this wiki page helped me in learning a lot about him. The wiki includes information about Jadexi's motives, and that he is even big on giving out personal details such as his own cell phone number and other weird stuff that people usually wouldn't do. According to this wiki, he often enjoys talking of his personal hygiene such as his armpits, body odour, feet and his toes. Charming. There were even conspiracies that Jadexi was only trying to buy friends for his giveaways and that he had other motives, but really to me it just seems like he wanted to have a positive impact on the game and its players. Jadexi would spontaneously start large dance parties in the old Lion's Arch. He would often attract huge amounts of players to join him as well. You would always see Jadexi in map chat expressing his opinions on quirky topics and just weird shit, and he was often expressing openly that he needed a girlfriend. I don't even want to know how many e-girls cuck this poor dude for his gold. Jadexi is said to still play the game today, but is less easy to come by due to the game now having mega servers and new Lion's Arch being poop. Players are often in paid instances outside of the Lion's Arch nowadays, but Jadexi is still around. Commander Kidding. Turn your volume down, folks. <laughs> Kidding's story isn't a very long or in-depth one. 
he was just fucking loud. Kid Ink rose to fame after a video of his rage and screaming World vs World Commanding began trending in the Guild Wars 2 community and he essentially became a huge meme. He was known as Commander Kid Ink of C for his rest that people would just go to for a laugh. Take a listen to a few of these clips. 20 seconds, 20 seconds, 20 seconds, 20 seconds, 20 seconds. My boss, my, 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 my. Maybe he didn't hear you. Can you say that again? Fucking push! I'll fucking push! Just fucking push! Fuck him! Fuck! Oh, fuck him! Yeah, he succeeded. Very nicely done. He shouted them away. You make that 35. No! <laughs> As you can see, he wasn't super experienced and neither was his guild. But after this video, he did begin gathering a way bigger following for people just looking for a laugh and just having a, a crazy fucking raid in World vs World. Not much is known of where Kid Ink is today, but I can guarantee you there are lots of people out there who still remember his veil calls and him just screaming like an absolute monkey. People went to Commander Kid Ink for laughs and he provided just that. I just interject a second. Uh, the group at Sunhills have been uh, grabbing off. What's the gate now? What's the gate now? Tell me now. Tell me now. What's the gate now? I can't hear you. What's the gate now? <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me, pussy. What's the gate? <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Knodal Bert. Forgive me if I've mispronounced this, I'm not German. Knodalbert is another Lion's Arch map chat legend. However, he was loved by some and hated by others. I'd like to thank Takio, who is a German Guild Wars 2 YouTuber who provided me with this information, as anything I could find was in German. According to Takio, Knodalbert was a role player who walked through Lion's Arch and preached in map chat about his lord and saviour, the master. Some weird religion that he made up. His style was funky, he rocked an afro with purple boots and nothing more. He would tell people that they should give up on their gold because it's the root of all evil. Although he would gladly carry their burden and save their gold in the master's vault. Takio says, I think it might have worked because someday he wielded the legendary scepter Meteologicus. Takio also says the lines he wrote were pretty creative and funny. Some people would argue that they were annoying but whatever. For example, he would say, the master stroked me with his mighty club and after that I saw the truth. Takio goes on to say, but the mega server system kinda destroyed his opportunity to interact with the German community, and I think after that he quit the game. Upon further investigation and doing a whole shitload of Google Translate, I found the official forum post by Knodalbert himself. In this long essay that he's written, he goes on to explain how he's carried this persona over multiple MMOs, including World of Warcraft and Dark Age of Camelot. He explains that he just does it for fun and that he admits that he's been saying a lot of junk in map chat for five years. As we go on, he explains how ArenaNet Game Masters actually approached him and threatened him with a ban if he'd continued his map chat junk. He says that out of all the games he's played, ArenaNet have been the only Game Masters to actually approach him and, and actually explain to him why he's gonna be banned if he continues. According to Knodalberg, ArenaNet said that he was reported uh, for making some pedophilic jokes and he admits to saying something about his master and orphans and some just weird shit and making borderline offensive jokes and he owned it and said that he completely accepted that decision and that he's been posting pretty much junk in map chat for five years. He says, one more thing, I do not want to see any angry bastard runs on ArenaNet. He says that it's completely fair for the ArenaNet team to threaten him with this ban and he 100% accepts it. He says once it's time to say goodbye then it should be so. He goes on to explain that he'll log in one last time on Knodalbert and give away all his treasure and his items and his gold in the game to many people on his friends list. And then finally he ends it with, may the master continue to favour you, may his magnificent butt watch over your deed, and may he always enlighten you. Hallelujah. Quite the fucking story. And the funny part is, over these years, Knodalbert did actually gain followers and people following along with his story. Rosman the Boss Rasman is known simply for A. 
being one of the richest players in the game. B. Being shiny as fuck. C. Being the most fabulous looking Norn in the game. You'll often see him AFK in Lion's Arch with his double moot, which aren't skins by the way, both legit legendaries. And when I say you often see him in Lion's Arch, I mean like 24-7. You begin to wonder how on earth Rasmund makes his gold and can afford to look so good. He shines so much that it begins to hurt your eyes, like honestly. Rasmin is praised by many for his insane fashion and wealthiness, and there really isn't too much more to it. It's really hard to miss him, making him very well known across the game. Monkey Shines Any long-time World vs World players from either Ballless Pass or Dragon Brand will either have this guy blocked or have heard of him before. Monkey is an infamous Asura who only plays World vs World. He was simply, hands down, the most toxic person in team chat 24-7. If you didn't do what Monkey wanted you to do, you were going to hear about it. His most famous lines are either Ballless Noobs or DB Noobs, meaning Dragon Brand Noobs. As if Monkey's raging wasn't bad enough, his spelling makes things so much better because he can't put together a proper sentence. At one point, Monkey's main was finally banned in which he had an alt account named Simeus Prime where he just continued the same infamous behaviour he was known for. Say what you will about Monkey Shines' behaviour, but there was always a simple fact that this guy knew what he was doing with Siege. He could hit moving targets in open field with trebuchets like it was nothing. I remember personally one time me and my guild were running in open field constantly being hit by a treb and I was just like who the fuck is this dude monkey shines? And then sure enough when we go to check who it is monkey shines is right there his little Asuran thief shooting that treb at us. Regardless of his toxicity all who know monkey recall funny times of him raging in World vs World team chat and telling people to kiss his monkey ass. Prince Vingador. This name will instantly ring a bell to veteran EU PvP players. Vingador was simply known for being one of the most toxic PvP players who would be very vocal about it. If your team would wipe at the middle fight, or if you were against Vingador and focused him hard enough, he would AFK at spawn. There are dozens of Reddit and forum posts about Prince Vingador and his behaviour, showcasing crazy whispers, and his name got so well known in the PvP community that meme guilds were made about him, and people would fight his fire with fire, and troll if they were on his team. Just like this video here from Dr. Wrench titled How to Deal with Prince Vingador. Him and his buddy all AFK at the spawn node, resulting in Vingador eventually also AFKing. It is said that originally Vingador was a very average player when it came to PvP, but his toxicity and AFKing settled and he actually began becoming a fairly decent player. Not too much is discussed of him today, so I'm not sure if he's still playing or not, but Prince Vingador's name will carry on in the EU community for a long time. Well guys, that is my list for the most famous and infamous players of Guild Wars 2. I tried to include legends of all game modes of the game, although PvE was a little bit harder to come across, aside from Lion's Arch Legends of course. I really hope you guys did enjoy it, let me know if you want a part 2. If you have anybody in mind that I may have missed or a story of a Guild Wars 2 legend that must be shared, then please feel free to DM me on Discord or my Twitter, both links can be found in the description. I plan on doing more videos of this kind and providing the most entertaining content I can, so if you are new I would love if you could subscribe and leave a like to show your support see you guys all next time peace